We are going to go on a question format to understand what is the importance of the budget set. Budget set in detail. Why? Because this question is bound to come in your examination prevailing market price, which means the budget set is something which is available at that price, at that level only. All the points on an indifference curve represents bundles which are considered to be indifferent by the consumer. Good morning and welcome to the second chapter theory of consumer behavior in microeconomics where we are going to see in the second session a very important topic called as the budget set. Now we are going to go on a question format to understand what is the importance of the budget set. So this is the question that we are going to look today in the microeconomics. What we're trying to say is briefly explain the budget set with the help of a diagram. Now, as we go here, the answer for this question is very, very straightforward. So we are going to talk about the budget set in detail why because this question is bound to come in your examination and it's a very very important question for us to understand now just look into it suppose the income of the consumer is m so let's make a note of it the income is m and the prices of two products that we have taken is one is the banana the other one is mangoes they are being given in the format as P1 and P2 respectively. If the consumer wants to buy X1 quantities of bananas and he or she will have to spend P1 X1 of the money. Now let's try to understand this format very clearly. There is a consumer, he has an income and that income is being given as M. Now there are two products, bananas and mangoes whose prices are given as P1 and P2. Now, if the consumer is going to buy a particular product, quantity say X1, how much he is going to buy? P1 into X1. So, price into quantity for the given amount of income that is being told. Followed by, now the consumer wants to buy the next quantity. So, what will be X2 quantities which will be given in the format? P2 X2. So in the first case it was P1 X1. In the next case it is P2 X2. Now therefore if the consumer wants to buy a bundle. When I say the word bundle it is a combination that we are talking about. Consisting of X1 quantities of bananas and X2 quantities of mangoes. Then he or she will have to spend the same amount of money so which will be p1 x1 plus p2 x2 so automatically it is now taken into consideration so these are the two factors under which we are working these set of bundles are available to a consumer called as the budget set altogether now the budget set is thus a collection of all bundles that the consumer can buy with his or her income at the prevailing market so this is what we have to understand at the prevailing market price which means the budget set is something which is available at that price at that level only you cannot take the budget price away from the market you cannot see something which is outside the market description whatever is the prevailing price and with the income that the consumer has he is going to buy the products within that range only followed by prices for example when the consumer has rupees 20 and he is supposed to buy prices at rupees 5 then the available units are only the integral units the bundles at this consumer can afford is it's given by now let's see that the first bundle a where zero bananas and mangoes at the rate of 5 how much he can buy 4 because 5 4s are 20 now next is in the bundle b what we are going to see one banana he is buying and the remaining will be three of 
the mangoes. How is this calculated? 1 into 5 and this will be 3 into 5. Now 2 into 5, again 2 into 5. Now this will be 3 into 5, 1 into 5. 4 into 5, 0 into 5. So however you go, the final amount is 20 only. You cannot exceed that amount 20. So that's how we have been able to derive a graph here where we are trying to say that P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is equal to M. That's the budget line what you are going to see. And this is the budget set. So within this range and within this factors only, the consumer will be able to buy the given set of products. So that is what we are talking about the importance of the budget set. Now in the above diagram, what we have seen in the OX axis. So let me just go back in the OX axis. This is the OX axis. What have we taken? We measure the bananas and on the OY axis, on the OY axis, we have measuring the mangoes. Any point on the diagram will represent the bundle of two goods. That means the combination of that two goods. So the budget set will consist of all the points on or below the straight line, which will have this equation. What is the equation that we have spoken? P1X1 plus P2X2 is equal to M, where P1 is the price of one product, quantity of one product. Price of the second product, quantity of the second product, which is equal to the income of the consumer. Now, with that, we move to the second question that is very, very important in this chapter. And it's also a very important concept in microeconomics. And that is called as explain the indifference curve property, the map with the diagram. Now, let's try to go further. The consumer's preference over all the bundles can be represented by a family of indifference curve showing the diagram. Now, very, very important, I'm using the word here is family of indifference curve. That's a very, very important term. So it is not a single, it's a collection. That's why I'm saying the word family of indifference curve. This is also called as the indifference map of the consumer. So very important, why? Because this is also called as indifference map. So it is a mapping, it's a set of points, set of collection that we are talking. All the points on an indifference curve represents bundles which are considered to be indifferent by the consumer, which are considered to be indifferent. So when I use the word indifferent, that means they will not make any difference to the consumer. The consumer mind is so fixed that yes, whatever happens, he is not going to worry about it because he is very much clear about his choices. Now. A rational consumer will always try to prefer one commodity over the other that offers him a higher level of satisfaction and that is called as monotonic preference. So when you use the word monotonic, what does it mean? It means that preference of one product over the other on a continuous basis. So that's why we are using that word monotonic preference. So I'm continuously worried about one product over the other. In the above diagram, an OX axis, we will measure bananas and on the OY axis, we will measure on the mangoes. So you will have an IC1, indifference curve 1, IC2, IC3. So there will be many indifference curves that will be coming in where the consumer shows different levels of satisfaction. So every curve will show a level of satisfaction that is being derived by the consumer. Now, an arrow indicates that a bundle on the higher level of indifference curve are preferred. So on the higher indifference is preferred by the consumer and bundles on the lower indifference curve comparatively. So let's have a look at it. Now let's try to see the map all together here. You will be able to see that the curve that we have drawn here, the factors that we have drawn is the indifference curve altogether. So higher the indifference curve. So you see the arrow as it starts moving further, you will be able to see the higher indifference factor altogether like IC1, IC2, IC3, all those factors. So higher you go, higher will be the satisfaction of the consumer. 
with this i come to the end of this particular session i hope and believe that all the information that has been shared through this session will be of a great value and a resource to you in the upcoming session we shall try to talk more about the theory of consumer behavior but until then stay tuned stay blessed and stay enlightened forever thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session